Hi, this is Ebohan on Groove Station Canada TV. Here we go again. Connections on Groove Station Canada TV on the quest to find the meaning of life. For in finding the meaning of life, you get to experience the vastness and the prosperity of your soul. But a short time we live here on earth. For a short time we live here on earth. So you must do the things that make you smile and the things that put smiles on the faces of people. What we need on the earth are people who are of sound mind and people who are of loving heart. Yes, I know about all the factors that tends to render our attention towards our differences. However, the air that you breathe, the water that you drink, seem to think otherwise. It gives to all alike. In that saying, there is a wisdom that we as a people must embrace before we can create a better world. Cash times we live in. So it's time we listen as to hear and to understand that there is no road to peace. That peace is the name of the road upon which we must tread towards understanding. Peace is the name of the road that we must tread towards understanding. We have to unlearn in order to consciously learn. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make that change. On that note, I would like you to join me as I have a conversation with Mike on the heart that seeks enlightenment and the mind and the self. Michael, it's Michael, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Beautiful times. <laughs> so, um, personally, myself, based on the times that we're living right now, I believe it's maybe impossible to actually make an impact, a change, to make a change uh, without visiting one's heart, getting to know one's heart, getting to know one's mind, and getting to know the intricacies of our beautiful being. So uh, on that note, um, I have been privileged to, um, to attend uh, one of Michael's workshops, which was extremely invigorating and an and eye-opening experience for me. So I felt it is wise to share this experience, his knowledge, with you beautiful folks at home uh, because of the times that we are in, the times that we've been in, and uh, uh, it will at least help uh, most of the beautiful souls out there to understand better uh, who we are. So Michael is a certified teacher on uh, our remembering, the School of Remembering. Also, he uh, teaches the works of uh, uh, John Bello uh, through his workshop, the, uh, um, the Illuminated Heart, Awakening the Illuminated Heart. I would allow Michael to introduce himself to you beautiful folks at home. Michael, please. So who are you, Michael? Thank you. Well, I'm, uh, I'm Michael Margulies, and um, in fact, I am a, a certified teacher in the School of Remembering. And I teach the, um, the teachings of John Bolin Melchizedek, which is very profound, very illuminating, profound spiritual work that is done four consecutive days intensely with people who know each other and sometimes who don't know each other. Most of them don't know each other. Mm -hmm. It's very, very based on the heart. It's very based on opening the heart and healing the wounds of the heart, the emotional wounds of the heart, and also learning how to move from our brains to our oh, hearts, heart. which is an incredible upwardness. Even though on the body level it seems to be going down, it's actually moving upwards in consciousness. Okay. And um, so we're, we're actually returning from where we fell to our brains. We are returning and ascending to our hearts. Mm -hmm. And then after we do that, and the heart is in charge and the ego is more attenuated, we activate certain uh, these beams of light which are connected to our third eye and our pineal. And then what we do is we learn 
to reconnect the heart to the brain where the heart is in charge as opposed to the brain being in charge, which is what we see in our outside world, Reality, yeah. which is why we have a world that has been built outside of, of ourselves. nature and outside of ourselves, actually. And we have things like fracking and we have things that pollute the, the yeah, our, our mother, yeah. really our home, yeah. Mother Earth. And so we we make it so that the heart becomes, becomes in charge. Right, and that's those decisions coming from the heart, but just enacted through life to life through the brain, but the decisions coming from the heart. Okay. Whereas the heart makes decisions that is good for everybody, good for us, but actually good for other people as well as all life everywhere. It's from love. Exactly. And it's coming from unity from field. From unity field, yes. Absolutely. So, um, um, do you feel that a person or group of people, society, connecting with our hearts can actually, we can make a better environment for ourselves? That's what you just said. That's possible. So it's yes. very, very important what we're talking about right now. Oh, yes. And in fact, not only is it possible, but I believe that that is exactly where we are headed. And even though when we look outside now, we see something very different from what you just said. Yeah. I believe that we are just about to switch into the other level from darkest to dawn. Okay. And we actually will create a world based on heart consciousness and based on that which is good for everybody. Hmm. And that includes feeding everybody who doesn't have food, nourishing everybody, through love, feeding, educating, cleaning up all of the atmosphere, cleaning up all of our oceans, making sure everybody has, and nobody is a has-not. Okay. Because we, we're moving from duality, have and have not, we're moving to have and have, have, because the heart always works, which was best for everybody. Yes. So we will all be have and have. That requires like a, a great, great, it requires a great amount of understanding because what you're saying is we have to it requires opening the heart to be able to get to a level where you you're not bound by the norm this is who i am that's what i am he's that she's that this is and what like this is what like me. yeah this is what all this kind of stuff me. this is good for me and while the other person will take care of me yeah stuff. and the heart doesn't work that way and we are really truly going to move there and right now we're seeing something so extreme so that we can be woken up out of this, what are we doing? doing? Yeah. And we need to see an extreme in order to awaken. To awaken. It's, um, and this is what we're right here right now. And there's people all over the world. There must be, there must be, there's a couple of hundred teachers who are teaching. I don't know how actively, but there's, there, there must be at least a hundred teachers who are globally, who are teaching this work that Drum Blue has really given the world. And it is making a big difference, and it shall make more big uh, difference. And actually, not only this work, all work that is heart-centered, not only this work, mm -hmm. all work that is heart-centered, and you hear it now, it's becoming fashionable to consult one's heart. It's becoming, yeah. It Before, is, it wasn't like that. Exactly. No. And what's going on is the ambient energy, the ambient consciousness that we're bathed in is awakening us and so that we feel like oh well this is just uh, I just I happen to say the word heart or happen no 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 this is the ambient consciousness that we're completely dissolved and immersed in is moving us from our brain to our hearts and we in our workshop we do a four a four day big shift which is gentle still, mm -hmm. but still a big shift into our hearts, but everybody is doing it gradually because that is what the ambient consciousness is for. programmed yes, for. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. And then I wonder, like, you know, because what you're saying right now, I understand what you're saying. It's beautiful what you're saying. How come we don't have that in schools as a subject? Like, you know, the heart and the love and caring and nurturing each other, being a subject of its own? That's about to it's, that. it's about, the, because it's very important, like, you know, I don't understand to have a foundation within our children for the next generation, to have a love, understanding of self, and uh, uh, respecting each other in the environment. So I guess you answered the question, you said we are in, a, in, in the times where things are changing, we are awakening to our, our reality as we know it now to make a change.
those exact schools that teach heart consciousness, teach meditation to children, is coming. Okay. And even though it seems really far, we look out there and we say, no, 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 because look, we have this. It's going to switch. It's going to be from darkest to dawn, and we will have that. And in our lifetimes, we are going to see schools that teach meditation from from, uh, from, from age from, five yeah, from, uh, or, or a young age, whichever that is, and actually teach workshops. Part of the curriculum, what we did in our workshop, I bet you is going to be inculcated into the system exactly. in the future to come. More and more and more. Don't and more get us wrong. Education is important. Absolutely. For education without the foundation of love, mm. we, don't, we don't know how that will go, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And actually, what I'll even add to that is that children have this consciousness. Already. But when they go to school, the way that it's designed now, it takes them out of their hearts and they fall into their brains. Okay. okay. That's why this world is this way. Mm -hmm. But actually, we're going to have, a, a, we won't have to get the children into their hearts. We just have to keep them in their hearts. Groom them to become more of themselves. Exactly. Right? Okay. Well said. And it's like flexibility. A child is born flexible. Yeah. They only become less flexible unless you just keep them flexible. flexible. And this is the same thing with our consciousness. Said, beautifully said. On that note, tell us about your parents, where you come from. Were you born here in Canada, Montreal? And you know, yeah. had your mom? And <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was born in I was born in Montreal. My parents uh, my parents were both raised in Israel. Okay. My father my father is uh, Polish. And my mother is Iraqi, and they both um, moved to Israel and were raised in Israel. And they came here, and they had my, myself and my sisters. Okay. I have two sisters, one older, one younger. Darlings, we're great friends. Okay. And um, my parents are very loving people, very kind people, taught us to uh, give those who have less, taught us to help. And um, I've been very fortunate to have been raised by, by one of the people. Yeah, loving parents, yeah, right? parents, yes. yes. I have put together like uh, questions for you, please, because I know if it's good for you, what's good for your time? Yeah, I started working on my parents before the time. So and, um, what's good for us is good for you. And so the next question will be like, you know, how was it like, you know, the, the when did you start becoming, coming, okay, and I I working on that kind of, I don't know where it's where it would have come from, but I just had a point in life as well. And then when I was 18 years old, reach out for more. I started practicing martial arts and we started becoming, you know, on love. It might not be love, it might not be like a lot of stuff. What got you in line with that? You know, it's funny, I've been working on myself spiritually since the earliest memory of Christmas now. Now there's something like that in my head, like, you know, thinking because there are people out there, there are people out there who are so with these qualities. Blocks to this idea, suggesting that in another lifetime they were different. That is most to see themselves as anything higher than what we see today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would you say to very, such very people, like people who don't believe at all is twelve or twenty twelve, 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 to only consider yourself to be that which is the body because and that which is this lifetime because people are always calling you by your name even your mom does and that kind of stuff and we say things like I am angry I am hungry so you probably think that you're the body and you think that your emotions are yours as well and so it's normal and life is completely geared to keeping you in that state of amnesia because we are truly all in a state of amnesia. In this level, it's as though we had a little bump on the head and we forgot who we really are, which is actually why Drumvelo called this workshop that we did Awakening Women in Heart, but it's the school of, of remembering. remembering. And so that it's normal if you, if you think that this is all that there is. What I would say is that this would be like water. And our higher self is kind of like the evaporate. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's, a, it, it's a rarer, so you more rare, or less. That. Exactly. Okay. It's, it's a less dense version of you. Okay. And it's, it's that Makes which sense. is you that has an optic in life that is very similar to the eagle that is flying 200 feet above. The eagle not only sees the best way 
to get to your close destination and also sees the next five times you try to get somewhere. Right? So that I wouldn't I wouldn't try and convince you of anything because you know if, if you're not interested, you're not interested. But what I will say is if you do ask your higher self and say, give me a sign, show me that there's something more. Give it to me in a synchronicity, give it to me in a dream, give it to I me like in a song, give it to me in somebody who says something. But even if it's subtle, from subtle to very, very, very obvious, give me a sign. Basically. And your higher self will gladly give you a sign because your higher self always wants you to be closer with your higher self, to bridge that gap. And and the most basic but very, very profound way to bridge the gap of any connection is just to say hello. Yeah. So say hello to your spiritual self. self. Yeah, makes sense to me. A lot. Again, your thoughts on Canada as a country, Montreal. What do you think? Your thoughts on Canada? Well, listen, Canada is, is a great is a great country. Um, I do believe that uh, what's what's great is if you look at if you look at the constitution, the way the constitution is built, that, that that skeleton of the laws, because laws are very important because they they are very similar to each individual's values, okay. and they are that which guarantees one rights of freedom. And freedom is a very spiritual thing because spirit is always free. Gotcha. So that is great. Now what I will say on the other side, the what I'll call is the problem is that not only in Canada, but in many, many, many countries, it's not the older, wiser souls that are running the country. It is the newer souls that they don't realize that it really it's about it, everything is about the sake of the whole. So we see things like corruption, we think we see things like haves and have nots. But that is changing. I do I do believe that in the next not even that long, 5, 10, 15 years, we're going to see old souls step up and become the leaders of the country, not only Canada, but other countries. Okay. And we're going to see a completely different way of living. And it won't take long because of the ambient consciousness is programmed for that. Not because Michael Margulis thinks so, because this is what the ambient consciousness wants. wants okay. Montreal is a great city. Montreal is a great city. I, I mean, Montreal, the phenomenon yeah. of Montreal is a fantastic city. And for a city, I can't imagine another city I'd like to live in. Yeah. Um, I, will, I will say that I do, uh, I, I look forward to um, eventually moving to the country. Mm -hmm. But Montreal is an amazing city. Yeah. To live in a city, it would be Montreal. To live in. Okay. The yeah. other is like the best advice on your journey that you have received. Well, probably the best advice that I've, I've received a lot of really, 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 really good advice. So, so it's, but I'm going to say that the best advice that I've ever received was when I was 12 years old, my father came up to me out of nowhere, seemingly, and said, Michael, you be the yardstick of your own measurement. Don't use others as your yardstick of measurement. You be your own yardstick of measurement. And that allowed me to really, really be in the margin and not just do what everybody else is doing, mm -hmm. including developing spiritually at 12 years old where it's really not fashionable. That's beautiful from your dad. From my father. And I mean, that left this indelible value system within me that I can always, I don't, I don't do what others are doing because it's fashionable. Mm -hmm. And what I will say, another thing was fantastic that my mom gave me, and it wasn't advice per se, but it was a training. Okay. She would she would have me, instead of running around and getting into trouble, she'd have me look at, at Hebrew words and on or just have them read them and then on a, a dime stop and have me tell me tell her what the root of that word was. And that trained me always to see why something was happening, the root of why. So not always to be reactive to what, I'm but sorry. to understand what is underneath giving rise to something, I'm whether sorry. it's an illness or whether it's a beautiful thing or whether it's a tendency or a trend or something. And those two things were profound, very, very, very profound shapers. Yeah. Yes. And the worst, so to say. <laughs> the worst <laughs> advice. Yeah. Wow, the worst advice. It's hard to, it's hard to, uh, those are hard to remember <laughs> because I try to let them go. Um, I would say uh, to resist just for the sake of resisting. Okay. 
that's that's not very good advice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about planet Earth, what comes to mind? Oh, beauty, sentient, beautiful, giving, giving, giving being. Giving, giving, giving. Those that All we have to our learn it, yes. the traits and characteristics yes. of planet Earth. Yes. To give and to give, to give. To give, um, give. I mean, even Mother Earth's skin is edible when you consider it. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. So this beautiful, beautiful, amazing woman who has given this part of her existence as our terrain for growing as spirit. There's nothing else but to give thanks all the time. Morning through the day. I Absolutely. Agree. And the meaning of life, your opinion? Oh, the meaning of life is to grow closer to being that which is your higher self. So to release that which is unfinished business, the, the Hindus call it karma. Okay. And to step into the freedom, into the grandeur of who we really, really are, which is not something contained in the body, but something so much more, mm -hmm. and to grow. To grow, not to necessarily grow. all the way to go from A to Z in one lifetime, because we have, we have many lifetimes, I know that for sure, but to grow to the point where we don't have to repeat things, to truly, to truly learn, to, to grow, and ultimately is to love and to give. To give. To give, That's to it. love and grow. Beautiful. Beautiful said. And your thoughts on, you, you already said that you answered already because you spoke about like um, the reality we face today. Get in tune with our higher self in order to like you know create something like destiny wise and reality. So I was gonna ask you the next question. What are your thoughts on what the affairs? But you've already answered that yeah. prior to like you know. So we're going to like you know. What about um your take on what like what it means to be human? That relates to life already. So you've already explained that already. We'll move to the next one, which is like uh, um the heart, which is your the heart, the mind. So, can you expand on each of these? What is the heart? The heart is the source of all of creation. It is, if you were to, if you were to look at, if you were to look at um, the, the quintessential fireworks, where you see that there's one, and then it comes out and explodes in in a sphere. That's that's the heart. That is that which is in the center that creates everything. Okay. And part of what it created is the mind. And the mind is there to carry out life on this plane of existence. Okay. So it is it is the female and the male. Because okay. the heart is, is very female. And it is that which um, lives really in this place of dreaming up reality and feeling through reality. Whereas the mind is more about thinking and logics and that kind of stuff. And you actually, on this plane of existence, you need both. You always need both. And so that the mind and the brain, that is what, because it has the visual centers and all of life is actually a holographic movie happening on this amazing, to be this amazing screen that is all around us that in, that Dernflo affectionately refers to as the Leonardo sphere, but because it's all a movie, all an image, the brain with the visual centers is what brings the inspiration of the heart into existence. So when there is a beautiful connection, but the source comes from, comes the, heart, from the heart, yeah. then the brain is working for the heart, almost like uh, an overhead projector. Mm -hmm. You have the overhead projector, you have the, the unit itself that has the light with the acetate on it, and it's coming up and it's reflecting onto this this mirror and that shines it out onto the screen yeah. and then we watch it. It comes from the heart, but but the but the mind is is actually bringing it into, into play. Into reality, reality. absolutely. Yeah. So the mind and the heart we've spoken about, and then what the heart is it the same thing as the soul? Well, the soul, the soul, um, the, the heart is where the soul roots itself into the body. I mean, spirit is everywhere and within yeah. your body, but critical mass, your heart is the place where where your soul roots itself into the body, okay? okay? And there's other places where the body, uh, where the spirit is rooted into the body. We can say the heart, we can say the third eye or the sixth chakra. We can also say a chakra that's actually outside of the body, the eighth chakra. But in the body is, is really the, 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 the deepest place where the heart is, where, the, where the, the critical mass of spirit is rooted within us. Okay, yeah. perfect. And so soul, 
is the same thing as consciousness? Well, you can say that because um, we're starting to get a little technical, but what aware uh, yeah. awareness is, is sort of before, a, is spirit before a soul differentiates itself into I am. Okay. So that spirit is where it's awareness. just am, it's just pure awareness without any differentiation. Mm -hmm. And then consciousness comes when, when there is a differentiation of that. But you can call spirit and, and awareness and, and soul, you can call it pretty much the same thing, in the, you know, without splitting hairs too much. And, and that consciousness, awareness, is that the higher self? Yes. Okay. Yes. So and there's different levels to that, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, like, just like how you can, you can say there's ice, and then a rarefied version of ice is slush, and then a more rarefied version of slush is water, and a more rarefied version of that is the evaporate coming off of water, and a more rarefied version is the clouds, mm -hmm. right? So that there's different aggregates or different densities. Okay. Can connecting with our higher self. Yes. How can that help better? You said that before, but just for the mind that's far away, that like, uh, you know, skeptics and stuff, which is okay, it's fine. How can connecting with one's individual higher self or collective higher self, how can, or, and through, through meditation, and how can that better our world? Well, listen, um, the higher self, just like we were saying with the ego, is really that, that aspect of us that sees so far into the future and also sees spherically. So the higher self really has this, this wisdom because it knows why we incarnated this lifetime. So it really knows the game plan, the blueprint. Mm -hmm. But life has all kinds of distractions and, oh, but I should do this and because this feels good and the body likes this, or the emotional body feels very comforted by this, or maybe I should do that. And so that the higher, so that the higher, and then we can get sidetracked. We can mm -hmm. get sidetracked from our, our um, primordial destiny why we came even to take a body, to, to incarnate in a body. And so that higher self really is always going to give us the higher choice. At every moment we have a choice, whether exactly. it's how to classify a thought or what they don't have a choice. When you have a conversation with most people on the street, they don't realize that we have a choice. Yeah. A lot so, of people say things like, oh, that person made me do it, or, or that person made me feel this way, or something like that. But really, we actually always have a choice, and more that we step into that that part of us that never suffers, our higher self, more that we actually do have a choice and and don't have to be as reactive and can just act. Exactly. Yeah. Rather than react all the time. Absolutely. Exactly. Now, on that note, it, um, when you speak, when I, I I've been traveling, like you have traveled to Africa and different countries, and I had the opportunity to speak with lots of people. And when I speak with them, like, you know, uh, they're uh, about meditation, about like, you know, looking like in the mirror to yourself, basically, they seem to say, even here in Canada, we don't have the time. We live mm -hmm. in a society where we're always on the go. What about a mother who has uh, uh, three children or a, a single mom who's working to make ends meet and have three kids and have to do, you know, giving it our best, yet she's still like stressed and, you know, how can such a person man or woman or child, individual, how can you meditate mm -hmm. in a state mm -hmm. like that? So what would be your, like... Well, uh, well what I would say for, for, for the mother, for the mother situation, you know, I would say that, I would say mothering a child is one of the most spiritual things that you can possibly do. Um, my, one of my uh, amazing uh, teacher, his name is Michael Tamori. He says he says that you know mothering a child is like the equivalent of forty years of meditation. So the thing is, is that that's a very very spiritual thing to do. Yeah. You know, um, and having time. Well, you probably don't have time, but if you can have even one minute and say, "Higher self, help me out with this," and yeah. that'll be what it is. So there's a relativity too, and but for every and, and for but just in general. Once you start putting meditation in, in, into a place of primacy in your life, then it becomes actually a source of rest, and it actually makes it so that you're so much more efficient in the rest of your day, that if you don't meditate, you're not going to get more done. You yeah. know, so that you're not going to get more done. So even though you take the time to meditate, whether it's 20 to 30 minutes or 40 minutes or whatever the time it takes you to meditate, 
somehow it'll arrange your life in a more coherent way that you'll, you, you will get just as much done if you did meditate. And, and is there a specific way to meditate? Well, there's, listen, there's many, many, many ways okay. to meditate, and they're all very, 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 they're all very valid. It just depends on where a, uh, a soul is in their journey from being individuated as a soul, taking all different bodies, having different lifetimes, different lifetimes, and then coming back. So at a certain point, that's why there's so many different traditions, that some traditions are very, very, very physical, mm -hmm. because the um, the soul still thinks it's the body. But then once you get to a certain level, you need to have other kind of meditations because the soul already has learned that it's not the body, it's not the mind, it's not the thoughts. So you need other kind of meditations. So just like what you learn in grade one, you know, to build with blocks and macaroni and all of that stuff, it's very relevant at that time. Then what you're going to learn in high school is very relevant too, but it's just relevant for that time, not when you're in kindergarten or, or grade one. So they're relevant, but it just depends on what it is. You know, like the like that example, um, you know, when you're two or two and a half years old, to learn to tie your shoelaces is a big deal. Oh, well, yeah. And everybody's applauding and all of that stuff. And then, you know, nobody's going to uh, give you applause <laughs> when you're, yeah, you're 40 years old or when you're 40 years old. But yeah. life is going to challenge you with other stuff. So it, it, it really depends, meditation really depends on where you are. What I will say is, if you're not sure, just follow your breath on the in and the exhale because this is the outside world and this is the inside world the outside world and the inside world if you keep following in and out pretty soon you will fall out of the duality of inside and outside so follow your breath okay which is very difficult this day and age follow your breath most people can even last like uh 20 seconds yeah absolutely so and the harder it is the more benefits you'll have just like any bodybuilding, the higher the weight, the more, the more. you're going to develop your muscles. Exactly. So, so we'll always notice it's difficult, yet, oh, then we get, there's glory, there's glory for the ransom. Exactly. Right? Yeah. On that, I was with somebody today who, a lady who broke down. Crying, and we were there to support her and to care for her and to make her understand that like, everything's okay through various things, through comforting soup and stuff. So, she actually, her words, she's going through all this pain based on her experience. Mm -hmm. She mentioned lots of things that really broke her heart, and she's carried those things for years, years and years. And today, she literally broke down. We had to, she called very dear friend of mine to 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 actually my girlfriend who drove to go pick her up from the city. It was raining, beautiful day, but she was raining and she was all by herself outside. She she had lost touch with herself. So so that brings me to the question of experience. Most of us seem to we're stuck that we are the experience. Can you elaborate on that? People like are we our experience? Can we Look at our experience as something that not us and learn from it and grow out of it. And because most of us are stuck in this experience. And so what are your thoughts on are we our experience? Experience because well, we are the way we experience our experience. We okay. are the way that we experience our experience. Exactly. So that you and I, we can both eat a bowl of soup from the same pot of soup. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much probably neither of us adds any any extra salt or anything that we eat this in, but we're both gonna experience that soup differently. Mm -hmm. So the way we experience is that which we take with us. Because listen, that soup, a certain part of that soup will become, you know, us, mm -hmm. and then the rest we return to Mother Earth, and then the rest we just consume through doing stuff, and then we don't have all we have is the experience, the way we experienced eating that soup. Okay. Right? So I would say that. Um, and, and sometimes what it is is that we experience things and it's sort of so painful, but life is moving so quickly that we don't have a chance to work on things. So we're going to put into kind of junk, emotional junk drawers in our body. We're going to put 
the, this pain until we have the wherewithal, whether it's time or space or whatever, to 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 transmute it, to deal with these emotions and to process them. But sometimes it just accumulates and accumulates and accumulates. And then after, as spirit has a harder time, our spirit has a harder time um, anchoring into the body because the because spirit doesn't like pain, doesn't like loneliness because in spirit you don't have pain or loneliness. loneliness. Exactly. So the thing is, so that when there's not enough ability to anchor into the body, what happens is, is that then there's these things called like psychoses and that kind of stuff, um, because the because spirit will leave the body and actually sometimes even another spirit can come in and man the machine and man, man the body itself and then problems can start, right? So the thing is, so and it's very important actually because the person who takes on the karma regardless of which soul was in that body, is the person who rented the body from Mother Earth, so mm -hmm. to speak. So it's very, very important to always be grounded in the body, in the body, always grounding in the body. If you remember, the meditations that we did were always about Mother Earth first. Yep. That's always it. to be yeah. in the body, to ground ourselves in the body, even and more that we're joyful, because joyful does mm -hmm. this, but to ground that joy inside. And... When, when we're sitting, especially in meditation, we could be sitting around and we might feel like uncomfortable in our legs or something like that. That's because our spirit being grounded in is encountering the pain. And so that we want to say, oh, I have to go do this, or I should go make breakfast, or, or I want to watch this TV, or I want to go make love, or I want to go shopping. It's because actually we're just uncomfortable and spirit doesn't like discomfort. Okay. But it's important to sit in it and to be like, okay, no, 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 I can be here with this. I'm not the pain. I am the spirit Experience. who's encountering the pain. The pain, spirit exactly. the pain. Yeah. Okay, on that note, please yes. tell us about Drumbello. Yes. And then we'll connect that with your workshop. What is your workshop? So who is Drumbello? So Drumbello Melchizedek is uh, an amazing, an amazing human being. He is a darling of a teacher. It's um, he's for many, 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 many students, and he's for many teachers who form other students. And his his whole life is always his whole teaching career has always been about teaching sacred geometry and ascension and waking people up to this time that we're in now. That we're mm -hmm. saying that the consciousness mm -hmm. is is based on togetherness and oneness and passion and love. He's been waking us up to that for a very, very long time and teaching us to redevelop and reacquire and reactivate our inner technology, our spiritual inner, technology. I love that word, inner technology. Yes. It makes sense to me. Yes, and, and, and inner technology that allow us to dance with life in a way that is more profound and more meaningful and more spiritual. And um, so his whole life has really been about that. You know, sometimes he gets a little sidetracked and goes off into like free energy and like cleaning up the atmosphere, which is all fantastic stuff. Mm -hmm. Really, it's really been more about always developing consciousness, you know, mm -hmm. and doing it through this place of complete love and thinning out of the ego and compassion. I mean, the, the fortunateness of, uh, that, that I feel is, is beyond words. Beyond words. Yeah. Which brings me to, um, during the workshop, you spoke about the sacred space. Yes. The, the tiny space. And then you spoke about um, uh, the heart, the tiny space, and activating, like, you know, the Bekabo. What would you say, like, you know, how would you, like, what is the, the sacred, what is the sacred space? The now? sacred space, the sacred yes. space and the tiny space. So the sacred space yeah. is everything that you, as a soul, uh, or anybody, because everybody has a sacred space within their heart. Okay, and that sacred space is everything that you have ever, ever been. Okay, since God individuated you as a soul throughout all of your different lives, every thought, word, and action you've ever had, and all the possible thought, words, and actions and lifetimes you ever will have. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual mission is in your sacred space. Mm -hmm. The vibration, the spiritual vibration that you are, the sound of your soul is there. Your reasons for coming to earth are there. Sorry, sorry. Everything you've ever been, all that you have to heal and clear in terms of karma um, is all there. Your higher self is there. Okay? Yeah. And then there's a place even more profound, if you can imagine, even more profound, which I would, I would um, 
say it's analogous to the womb of creation, and that actually even precedes you as an individuated soul, and is where there is just pure consciousness before any individuation. And actually, all spirits source themselves to there. If we look again at that firework that, that comes up and it goes in all directions, that's that one little spot, or you can call it the place of the big, that little peanut mm -hmm. thing, you call it the Big Bang. Okay. Everything that exists in the external world comes, comes from, from there. That. It, yeah. is, it is the mm -hmm. molecule, mm -hmm. molecule of creation. And when, when, because, when, and it's a place of zero polarity whatsoever, you can speak with anybody there. And then when once we infuse the quality of that tiny space into the heart, then we, we get to this level of consciousness that we can create whatever we want, but we can also actually activate our Mark Tava, which is our ascension yeah. vehicle. Okay, so the, the, the going farther, like you know, we said, the, like, uh, the tiny space, the sacred space, the tiny space. Is that that's not the same thing? No. Cyberspace is where, like you said, where everything, what we are, we've been, will be in the future, rest, the love, pure love, and then going farther, you have like you know that spot where you like explodes. Is that the tiny space? Yes. Okay, go and yeah. then activate the makeup. That's it. Is that the makeup? The makeup was well. The Merkaba is through the. We do it through the creation process. Much okay. better ways, but we do it through the creation process. Which our creation process, just like all creation process, is this heart and brain tantra. Mm -hmm. So whereas the heart makes love to the brain in this way, that the heart infuses the brain with its quality of love, joy, bliss, unity, oneness, have, have, as opposed to have and have not, which is what the brain is, duality. And then the brain becomes this, becomes that which it's infused by, by the heart, which is Love, bliss, passion, oneness. Yeah. And then, because the brain is what brings things out into the reality, the brain, we use that moment. We're in this place of, of the, the sacred union of the two polarities, female, male, just like any Tantra. Mm -hmm. and, the, and then, just like any lovemaking, you're able to produce something, right? So, exactly. lovemaking can produce a baby, but we use this situation to this state of consciousness to activate the Merkaba and but we can also use it to create whatever it is that we want. Beautiful. Now, um, I, the reason why I came to your shop is because um, I was curious and it awakening the illuminated heart. It's just beautiful. And I'm grateful that uh, my girlfriend like you know introduced me to you and we came here we experienced it was great. Now I believe there are people out there a lot of people out there who can benefit from it's not it's, it progresses right absolutely yeah, a lot of people can benefit if somebody or some group of people want to reach out to you because i believe you have um i mean we have the covid going on right now but there are you have workshops that are planned for the future for, for after the covid yes exactly so how through email, through um, telephone, landline, cell phones, or how can they reach you? People who want to reach you, how? Here, internationally, by mail, how can they reach you? Well, uh, people can reach me by email very easily from whether it's across the street or across the world, they can reach me um, at compassion7 compassion. at gmail.com, so C-O-M-P-A-S-S-I-O-N, number seven, at gmail.com. Compassion. 7 at gmail.com. That's right. Okay. And my website is www.one-heart.ca. Yeah, and that's where you can see about the workshops that I offer, whether it's my schedule or you can contact me if you want to organize a workshop. Perfect. Before we round this up, I have quick stuff for you. Like, you know, the first thing that comes to your mind, I'm going to mention something and you just, what comes to mind. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So the first is going to be drone value. Oh, thinning out of ego. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, love. That which is the, the cohesive, just giving, giving, giving this cohesiveness of all of creation Beautiful. and, of creation, uh, and the, the source of creation. Children. Innocence. Innocence. Beautiful. <laughs> Innocence. And, and, and a man? Oh, um... Consolidating the outside, protecting, giving, giving, giving. Beautiful. And a woman. Consolidating the inside, inside 
receiving, receiving, yet giving a transmuted something. Because the male gives that which is kind of, you can consider to be raw material. Like if you say that the male comes home, brings an apple, and then what a woman does is able to take just the essence and discard the rest. Beautiful. So that, so what a woman gives is an alchemized, um, what a man, what a man gives is both that which is pure and impure. Mm -hmm. Okay. The woman receives the this, pure. extracts the pure, Disguise and then the... gives, and the man takes the pure and then goes out and mm -hmm. gets pure and impure. Oh, and that's beautiful. how and that's how it works. So beautiful. both are giving, both are receiving, but men initiate their movement giving, women initiate their movement receiving, and then women then in turn their destiny is to give that which is extracted and pure, and then men receive. So both that's men and women pretty. receive. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty, pretty beautiful. Yeah. That's from a higher understanding, higher self. Like what you just said is beautiful. I can't, it's amazing. And what about being human? You've explained it all through, but just give it in a nutshell. What comes to mind when you think about being human? Being human, being a creator incarnate. Creator incarnate. What about Montreal? Can Montreal can be here? Intro. Well, Montreal is a, a beautiful melting pot, a beautiful uh, situation of, of free mindedness. And um, I mean, we have uh, just free mindedness, togetherness. Beautiful. Yeah, multicultural. What about meditating? Meditation? Meditating? Focusing the essence of our consciousness. Mm, alignment. Focus. I love that. And finally, yeah. when you think about connections. Connections, it's, uh, it's this whole life is about making connections. Even just that, what we were saying, just saying hello to our higher self. Yeah, that's it's bridging the gap. Yeah. It's really actually because all of this is this reality where we think we're separate, right? I think I, I finish here and then there's nothing here and then you begin here. But this whole, that is our kind of nature to think, but our destiny is to move to oneness. So always making more and more connections and um, dissolving that, that, that feeling of separation. Beautiful. I want to make you, I want to make you like, we will follow. What's the world they have as well as, as follow your workshops? Uh, because we as we had that, you know, so I think it's amazing. There's nothing, this is what we need. This is what is missing in the whole equation. We have it all, but we're missing the main, the main, the main heart. We're missing. Absolutely. And, and 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 thank God we believe it's times are changing and because there's so much things going on right now in the world and just in, in Africa, there's big protests going on in Africa, in India, and in so to a point yeah. where okay, something is missing, the heart. The giving and the transcending and the man and the woman, you know, like yeah. I find it really beautiful. I think, and I don't think I believe that this is the heart is where we should follow. It's the heart. Everything is in the heart. So, thank you so much for spending your time, giving us your evening, and hopefully you'll be available in the future if you want to follow up on. Oh, with, yeah. with great pleasure. Thank, thank you so thank much. You so much, and thank you very much. Thank you so much. You. Connections on Groove Session Canada TV yes. with Michael Magalis. Have fun. I hope uh, our conversations brought joy to your face, uh, to your hearts, and smiles on your faces. And um, we love you. And till we meet again, much love. Thank Québec, you. Québec, vous suivez Groove Station Canada, le chemin de la formation.